So what we're gonna do today is replace this switch with this switch for the rock lights. This is a switch that comes from 4runrun.com. It has three components. It has the switch, it has the wiring, and then it has this important little O-ring. You probably recognize this type of a switch. This is a common switch that comes with a lot of different types of lights. It's just kind of a generic, basic, regular switch. What we're gonna do is get rid of this. We're gonna put the rock lights in this spot. We're gonna move this blank down into here. This spot will eventually light up a front light bar. So just the switch change out today. We should be able to just grab right here and grab right here and just pull it straight out to get a little access. There's just these pop clips here. You wanna be careful you don't pull too hard because you don't wanna crack this area. Now, if you wanted more access, you could take that side panel off down, down here. There's a bolt down there. Then you'd have to take this off to expose an open flange there take this there's a bolt behind this little square you could unbolt that and then you could release your hood latch to give you all access to pull this out but we might be able to get by with just this and reaching down in there so first I'm gonna pop out this there's just these little flanges that you squeeze and you push this out and we're gonna make sure that this fits fine so, yes, it does. Now, sometimes, now that looks like it uh, goes in and out really easily. One thing that if it happens to not seat very well, that's the other part of this little rubber gasket that can slide all the way right around the neck of this switch and that might seat it a little bit better but that's what that little rubber gasket is meant for let's see if that so i guess i can't really tell a difference but it seems to function and fit just fine so that's great that's the first step next step is we're going to disconnect this wiring so that's a little bit harder to reach down in there You can see where the switch is down there. I just kind of squeeze the little flange pieces and pop it out. And then I'll pull this wiring up so we can connect and do this wiring. And I'm just gonna pull these out Let's see if this blank fits right back in there. Yeah, it does. Great, so that looks better. This is gonna be my lineup now. Rear camera, ditch lights, rock lights, and then down here is going to be LED front bumper bar. Before we do any wiring, we are going to disconnect this wiring harness because it still is connected to the battery and we don't wanna cut any wires while it's connected to the battery. So now here we have the red, the white, and the black. What we're gonna do is just basically cut all of them, cut these off, and we are going to solder these wires together. Now, you could alternatively put the male connectors on these wires, not cut these, and just insert them into there. You could do that, but we are gonna do a more permanent solution of the uh, soldering. That way we know it's a good, strong, secure connection. So this isn't the most straightforward thing in the world. 
Here on the wiring harness, we have an inline fuse. So this green is actually going to attach to this red. Then we have this red that's going to actually attach to the white. And then we have the black that's going to attach to the black. This yellow one is going to be unused and the purpose of the yellow one is to illuminate the actual logo of the switch. But I might do an experiment and try to do that. You can do an add a fuse down to the fuse panel by the driver's side here onto an accessory lighting fuse. Um, that could work, that's one option. I might see if I can tap into this front camera light because this illuminates. We're gonna experiment a little bit. Now, I guess before we solder everything, we are going to just try it out and make sure everything works. Okay, so we just put some temporary electrical tape on these just to make sure we have our wiring connected correctly. We uh, reconnected the wiring harness and now uh, let's see. So yeah, it lights up. So that is correct. Now let's take a look out here, make sure that those have lit up. Yep, that looks good. Okay, all that looks good. All right, so that wiring is correct. Now we can remove that electrical tape and we'll go ahead and solder those together. So we're gonna try these uh, soldering little crimps. So there's a piece of metal right there, and then there's heat shrink on both sides. So with the heat gun, it should melt the solder, make a good permanent fuse, and then heat shrink both sides. Okay, so I just put a leather glove behind here just to protect everything else. We're gonna do the heat gun. We have the wire all uh, set up. It's right in the middle where that soldering ring is. We're gonna give it a try. It looks like it made a pretty nice bond. You can see that it's crimped on both sides and it's soldered in the middle. So actually really pretty slick. So that's a nice permanent connection. We have the green wire to the red wire. We have both wires lined up with the soldering ring right in the center. One thing that uh, I learned by doing this is that maybe heat shrinking the sides first so it holds the wires in place and then apply the heat on the center ring and then that'll melt the solder. These are the solder and seal wire connectors that I used right here. It comes in a variety pack so everything looks pretty good. We can all tuck it all back inside and then put it together and see how that looks then. So while we're doing this, one thing that we can do to try to minimize the amount of extra wiring here is to pull them through as far as we can through that firewall. We can loosen this a little bit and then pull it through here. And what I was thinking is that, you know, we don't even need this wiring harness. That's still an attachment. It's still a point of failure. So why not solder these wires directly to here? So we would eliminate, you know, two, two feet, two feet of extra wiring. And instead of having two connection points, we would reduce that down to one connection point because this can reach all the way up to here where we put the ditch lights. And I might actually do that with the rock lights too. This is extra cable that we don't need. We could get rid of that. I kind of wish I would have thought of that before, but. 
Might as well do it clean now. Okay, so now you can see this is for the ditch lights. So you can see what I used to have was this and all this extra wire. And now this is what I have. So got rid of, all, got rid of that chunk of wire. So that's a much, uh, I think a much cleaner connection. Now this is kind of an experiment and I don't quite know if it's going to work yet or not, but the yellow wire illuminates the image when the car is on and then when you turn it on, then the light goes on the bottom. So in order to keep that light illuminated at night, that's what these yellow wires are for. But I don't really, some people will tap into this uh, windshield heater and tap into that and have those illuminated, but I don't really want to do that. I don't want to, I don't feel good about cutting wires for this one, but the front facing camera does get illuminated all the time when the car is on. So I might be able to tap into the blue wire on that. I'll have to look that up. So what that would mean is that these yellows would go together, maybe tap into the blue wire here, and then eventually have an LED light bar switch right here. So that would be one, two, three, four, and then the blue wire coming back out to attach to this. So that'd be five spaces. So we got these, these are the Wago lever nuts. And for now, I'm just gonna put them in here and just attach them for now. And I might do that hookup later on. So I'll just thread this through here. And this just goes in that space and then it's secure there. So there's one and now the next one goes in the second spot here. So we'll just do that for now and maybe hook that up later on. So now that all this is done, we can basically just kind of snap these in place. So we have the ditch lights right here. Then we have the rock lights. Looks like those fit in there nicely. We got rid of a lot of extra, a lot of extra wiring. So that's good. We don't need that. And we should be able to snap this just right back into place. Just make sure nothing is being pinched off anywhere. Okay, then we are gonna hook it back up to the battery. These switches are pretty decent quality switches. You can see that works just fine. And that works just fine. There we go. Turned out real nice. Okay, here we are at nighttime and let's just see how this uh, switch looks with the car turned off. So those are the ditch lights. And those are the rock lights. Pretty cool. Look at that switch worked. The good thing about wiring it like this is that the car does not need to be running for the rock lights to go on. So it's kind of nice uh, surround lighting, camping and stuff like that. So, okay, that turned out pretty decent. 
you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and we'll be sure to do some more of them. Uh, but I think this switch project actually turned out pretty cool. Looks real nice. So thank you.